Good morning and welcome to Holy Eucharist Rite 2. Today is Sunday, June the 21st. We are celebrating Proper 7 and we're worshiping together on page 355 in your Episcopal Book of Common Prayer. Let's take a moment of silence before we begin. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be his kingdom now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. O Lord, make us have perpetual love and reverence for your holy name. For you never fail to help us and govern those whom you have set upon the sure foundation of your loving kindness. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from Genesis. The child grew and was weaned, and Abraham made a great feast on the day that Isaac was weaned. But Sarah saw the son of Hagar, the Egyptian, whom she had borne to Abraham, playing with her son, Isaac. So she said to Abraham, cast out this slave woman with her son, for the son of this slave woman shall not inherit along with my son, Isaac. The matter was very distressing to Abraham on account of his son. But God said to Abraham, do not be distressed because of the boy and because of your slave woman. Whatever Sarah says to you, do as she tells you, for it is through Isaac that offspring shall be named for you. As for the son of the slave woman, I will make a nation of him also, because he is your offering. So Abraham rose early in the morning and took bread and a skin of water and gave it to Hagar, putting it on her shoulder along with the child and sent her away. And she departed and wandered about in the wilderness of Beersheba. When the water in the skin was gone, she cast the child under one of the bushes. Then she went out and sat down opposite him, a good way off, about the distance of a bow shot. For she said, do not let me look on death of the child. And as she, and as she sat opposite him, she lifted up her voice and wept. And God heard the voice of the boy, and the angel of God called to Hagar from heaven and said to her, What troubles you, Hagar? Do not be afraid, for God has heard the voice of the boy where he is. Come, lift up the boy and hold him fast with your hand, for I will make a great nation of him. Then God opened her eyes and she saw a well of water. She went and filled the skin with water and gave the boy a drink. God was with the boy and he grew up. He lived in the wilderness and became an expert with the bow. He lived in the wilderness of Paran and his mother got a wife for him from the land of Egypt. Here endeth the lesson. The Psalm this morning is a portion of Psalm 86. Incline your ear, O Lord, and answer me, for I am poor and needy. 
Preserve my life, for I am devoted to you. Save your servant who trusts in you. You are my God. Be gracious to me, O Lord, for to you I cry all day long. Gladden the heart of your servant, for to you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. For you, O Lord, are good and forgiving, abounding in steadfast love to all who call on you. Give ear, O Lord, to my prayer. Listen to my cry of supplication. On the day of my trouble, I call on you, for you will answer me. There is none like you among the gods, O Lord, nor are there any works like yours. All the nations you have made shall come and bow down before you, O Lord, and shall glorify your name. For you are great and do wondrous things. You alone are God. Turn to me and be gracious to me. Give your strength to your servant. Save the child of your serving girl. Show me a sign of your favor so that those who hate me may see it and be put to shame because you, Lord, have helped me and comforted me. A reading from Romans. Should we continue in sin in order that grace may abound? By no means. How can we who died to sin go on living in it? Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore, we have been buried with him by baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body of sin might be destroyed and we might no longer be enslaved to sin. For whoever has died is freed from sin. But if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. We know that Christ being raised from the dead will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So you must also consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. One day, Jesus was praying in a certain place. When he finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray, just as John taught his disciples. He said to them, when you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, for we also forgive everyone who sins around us, and lead us not into temptation. Then Jesus said to them, suppose you have a friend, and you go to him at midnight and say, friend, lend me three loaves of bread. A friend of mine on a journey has come to me, and I have no food to offer him. And suppose the one inside answers, don't bother me. The door is already locked and my children and I are in bed. I can't get up and give you anything. I tell you, even though he will not get up and give you the bread because of friendship, yet because of your shameless audacity, he will surely get up and give you as much as you need. So I say to you, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. For whoever you ask receives, one who seeks finds, and the one who knocks, the door will be opened. Which of you fathers, if your son asks for a fish, will give him a snake instead? Or if he asks for an egg, will give him a scorpion? If you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to the children, 
how much more will your Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. I speak to you this morning in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. First of all, I want to wish all of the dads watching today a very happy Father's Day. Now, some of you are not dads, and some of you did not have a father who was active in your life. We are all brothers and sisters in Christ, so we are all siblings of one father, our Father in heaven. When I was a little girl, I was the apple of my daddy's eye. I was a bit of a tomboy, and he loved that. He taught me how to throw a football with a perfect spiral. He taught me how to throw and catch a baseball. We watched football on TV, and he helped me with my math. When I was in the fourth grade, we began to study multiplication, and I was thoroughly baffled and did not do well on the tests. On April 9th, 1959, I had a multiplication test on the nines table, one that we had worked on quite a bit, and one that was, and to be perfectly honest, still is a bit hard for me. As my dad dropped me off at school, he drove off, never to return to our family. I was crushed. What had I done wrong? I really did quite well on the nines test, and I couldn't understand why he left me. Not until many years later did I realize that it was not me he had left, and that I had really done nothing wrong. In my sadness and feelings of abandonment, I turned to a father I knew would, who would never leave me or abandon me, my heavenly father. I prayed to him to strengthen me and to give me courage to keep going. As always, he was there and he never let me down. Jesus' disciples were confused also and wanted to learn to pray. So they asked Jesus to teach them how to pray. He taught them the prayer that is so much a part of each Christian denomination, the Lord's Prayer. In this prayer, there's a wealth of knowledge concerning God's future kingdom on earth, where Christ will reign as king and ruler of all. We are all brothers and sisters in Christ, so he truly is our father. We are heirs through God and heirs with Christ. I am a therapy dog handler, and prior to the COVID crisis, I visited many nursing homes with my dog, Nutmeg. Often the residents asked me to pray for them and with them, and I would always pray the Lord's Prayer. No matter how ill or disoriented the individual was, the words of the Lord's Prayer came to their minds and out of their mouths. One of my favorite books that I studied when I was preparing to be a deacon in God's church is entitled The Greatest Prayer by John Dominic Crossan. In the book, he analyzes the wording and meaning of each line of the Lord's Prayer. I was especially touched by his prologue in which he states, the Lord's Prayer is Christianity's greatest prayer, but it is also Christianity's strangest prayer. It is prayed by all Christians, but never mentions Christ. It is prayed in all churches, but never mentions church. It is prayed on all Sundays, but never mentions Sunday. It is called the Lord's Prayer, but never mentions the Lord. It is prayed by Christians who focus on the next life in heaven or in hell, yet never mentions the next life, heaven or hell. The Lord's Prayer, also known as the Our Father, can be found two different places in the Bible. Matthew 6, 9 through 13, which is the most used version of the prayer, and also Luke 11, verses 2 through 4. The language in this prayer is not speaking about God, but is speaking to God. And Jesus is inviting us to call upon God as Father, because God as our Father has created us and has given us life and has created us in his own image. When the prayer states, your kingdom come, we are praying that God's kingdom will come and we are asking that God's power to create will prevail over forces that destroy 
and that his power to redeem will release us from bondage. In the next section of the prayer, there's a bit of a shift, especially when we're, he, we begin to ask for something. We're asking for daily bread, not just for ourselves, but for all, which today includes those who are unemployed and out of work due to the pandemic and all who are in need of sustenance. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Forgiveness is an attitude of the heart for those in obedience to the authority of Christ. As long as wrongs from the past define the present, the wrongs also close off the future. The word forgive literally means to release. May we all be released from our sins. To forgive is not to say that what has happened doesn't matter. Rather, it is to say that the wrongs that have occurred no longer define the relationship. Forgiveness or release means that there can be a different future, which is no longer defined by the past. As, if, as Israel forgave, they were also forgiven by God. As they showed mercy, they also became merciful toward God and man, and they became peacemakers and insurrections against Rome would cease and peace would sweep over the nation of Israel. This is the peace that I yearn for, and I know you do too. In the book of Matthew are the Beatitudes in which we hear, blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. And blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called children of God. Our next petition in the Lord's Prayer is, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. This is a lot to ask. Lead me away from the temptation to indulge, to harm, to place myself above others, to lie, to cheat, to steal, and the list goes on and on and on. Deliver us from all evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. This prayer contains all of the heavenly blessings placed onto the will of God for the restoration of the earth and humanity beginning in Jerusalem. Christ will reign in power and glory from the throne of his father. This is an optimistic and hopeful prayer. Oftentimes we pray this prayer by rote memory and do not listen to exactly what we're saying. We've heard and witnessed so much lately about racial inequities and social justice. The riots and the non-peaceful demonstrations have broken my heart. I've spent the majority of my life ordained and non-ordained working with and in minority communities. Having taught in an all black high school for 16 years and having worked in the Hispanic community since high school. My heart aches at the many injustices that I have witnessed. And I've tried to be an advocate for those who in many instances have no voice. I was particularly moved recently by a photo of the presiding Bishop Michael Curry and the right Reverend Mary Ann Budd, the Bishop of Washington, kneeling wearing an orange clerical stole. Orange is not a liturgical color, but was chosen to show solidarity to the aversion to violence. Last week, a package arrived at my house from someone I did not know. Now, I personally suspect that your chaplain, Chaplain Jen, had something to do with this, but I now have my own orange stole. Please join me in praying daily for our nation and all of the people who are in it, made in God's creation, made in God's image. May we always remember that red, yellow, black, brown, or white, we are all precious in his sight, for he is our Father. Amen. Reverend Deacon. <laughs> maybe onto something that the chaplain had something to do with the orange stoles. I did, before we move on with our service, want to read you a brief excerpt 
from Ms. Colleen Hintz, who is the seamstress and um, the creator of this fabric. If you'll notice, uh, there are a myriad of different faces, of different faiths, and of different colors in the print. And she says, it is my hope that you might find yourself a family member, a friend, someone in your neighborhood that you could have seen among the faces within. It is my prayer that these stoles have helped raise awareness and action until the day comes when they become a footnote in history. May it be so. It's also worth noting that your bishop, the Right Reverend Ian Douglas, was one of the three bishops who initially requested that Mrs. Hentz make these. Uh, bishop Douglas of Connecticut, Bishop Sutton of Maryland, and the now retired Bishop Beckwith of Newark in New Jersey. As we pray, let us continue with an affirmation of our faith, the Nicene Creed found on page 358. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people this morning are form three. They can be found on page 387. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. That we all may be one. Grant that every member of your church may truly and humbly serve you. That your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons that they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. That there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble that they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and for those of others. At this time, feel free to share your prayers of intercession or thanksgiving aloud or in the silence of your heart. O oh Lord, our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people. In the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls, and to you we give glory. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, 
we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And, and also with you. with you. My friends, at this time, if we were together, we would hug, we would cheek kiss, we would elbow bump, we would fist bump, whatever DPH allows us to do at this time, since we are separated. Take a moment to think of friends, send them positive energy and love and prayers. And once the service is concluded, feel free to reach out, to call, to text, to keep those relationships alive. We will now move to page 364 to pray the prayer that our Lord and Savior taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Almighty God, who has given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication unto thee, and has promised through thy well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, thou wilt be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, the desires and petitions of thy servants as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of thy truth, and in the world to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, God. to God. See you next week, my friends. <laughs>